Good morning, BYW students. It's Mr. O'Sullivan. Um, today I just realized something. Uh, we actually didn't really go over this in Algebra 1, but it is something that you did learn the basics of in middle school. So this is actually a throwback to, if you're a 10th grader, two years ago. If you're a 9th grader, one year ago. So today's learning target is I can use ratios and proportions to solve problems. Now you're probably wondering why is it that I need to know about these weird looking fractions? Well, guess what? In future units, when we study the applications of triangles, the properties of them, we're gonna realize that similarity, which you learned about in eighth grade, because I taught eighth grade very briefly, um, you're gonna realize that similarity in our triangles and our figures goes all the way back to proportions. So if you can solve a proportion, you can solve all those level two, level three, level four questions. So today's learning target, again, as I said before, is I can use ratios and proportions to solve problems, but here's the issue. What's the definition of a ratio or a proportion, and how can we write it? So let's zoom in. So on your worksheet, you should be filling in these definitions, either annotating with your stylus or by writing it in. So I'm going to reveal our definition of a ratio. So our definition of a ratio is going to be a comparison between two numbers. So for instance, I can compare the amount of boys and girls in class when things were in all girls school. So it would be hard to compare the number of girls to the number of boys because every single time there would only be zero boys as a student. But we can compare the amount of people who like Starbucks or Dunkin'. We all know I'm a Starbucks person. Or we can compare the number of students in AP literature versus regular English or vice versa. The ways to write it are quite straightforward. We can write it as a colon b, which we just say is a to b. We can write it as a over b, and we can simply write it using a to b. Again, they all mean the exact same thing. The most common one that you will see in our class is these two. I'm gonna circle them. You will see this one often, and you will see this one often. We typically don't write the a to b in version three. Now on to the definition of a proportion. Well, a proportion is a comparison between two equivalent ratios. We're gonna be going over that very shortly. An equivalent ratio is simply the ratios that reduce to the same value. Our next way of writing it is going to be these. And I'm gonna zoom in so you can see. It's A to B equals C to D, A colon B equals C colon D, and then lastly, A over B equals C over D. I'm giving you the heads up almost 99.99% .99 of the time we're gonna be writing it exactly like this. And to solve this, when you want to solve for x, we're going to be doing something we learned way back when, and that's cross multiply. So we're going to be going back to cross multiplying, which is something you did learn in middle school. So there you have it. That's the definition and the ways to write it for ratios and proportions. So here's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to determine if each of the following pairs are equivalent ratios, and here's how you do it. For number one, we have three over five equals nine over 12. The first thing I do, there's actually two ways. I'll show you both ways. I can simply just cross multiply. So when I cross multiply, I simply draw like a little butterfly thing or a band-aid and I do five times nine. This is where we need to know our multiplication facts automatically. What's five times nine? It's 45. I now do 12 times three and 12 times three is 36. So if I wanna say that those two are equivalent, well, guess what? They are not equivalent because 36 is not equal to 45. So they are not equivalent. In our next example, we have three over four equals 75 over 100. The first thing I do is I draw my Band-Aid and I do four times 75 you might not know that one in your head right away, but four times 75 when you type it into a TI-84 is 300. Now I'm gonna do 100 times three. When I do 100 times three, you can do that one in your head, it's 300. So when I do that, I see that I have 300 on both sides of my equal sign. When I have the same number on both sides of my equal sign, that shows to me that I have equality which means that these are equivalent ratios. So this is a yes. But there's another way I could have done it. 
There's actually multiple ways I could have done it, but I can show you a second way. One of the multiple ways. If I want to go from 3 to 75, I have to think to myself, how, what do I multiply by? Well, you can do 75 divided by 3, and that gives me 25. So I'm multiplying by 25. If I want to know that they're equivalent ratios, that means if I do 4 times 25, that has to be 100. Well, if I do 4 times 25, that actually is 100, because I can type that into my calculator, or I just know 4 times 25 is 100. So that means is if I multiply my numerator and my denominator by the same exact number, and they're this number I want it to be on the right-hand side, boom, they're equal. I'm going to ask you to try the next one by yourself. So in Edpuzzle, you will simply write in your answer. Uh, in live time, we'll go over it. So I do 7 times 9, and I get 63. I do 6 times 10.5, and I get 63, which means that they are equivalent ratios. So I get another yes, 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 equivalent ratios. I'm liking this. This is a lot of fun. I don't get to do a lot of this. So here's your next challenge. If you are in class, we will have a whole class discussion. But if you are doing the Ed Puzzle, what I would like you to do is create your own pair of equivalent ratios in the open-ended response and explain to me and Miss Daniel why they are equivalent. So now we're going on to the cross multiplication aspect. We did cross multiplying before. This is just it with variables. We just draw our band-aid and we get A times D. We draw our band-aid and we get B times C. That's how we're going to be solving these problems on the next page. So right now we're gonna be solving some of these equations together. Once you get the hang of it, you can do these examples by yourself or you can follow along with the video lesson. Directions are going to be solve each of the following equations. Each will require the use of cross multiplication, and I'm being very, very nice today because I'm in the mood to be nice. I'm telling you, you have to cross multiply. You will not be told to cross multiply in the future. So here's how we do it 2 over 3 is equal to 6 over x. I simply do my band aid or my butterfly, whatever you want to call it, and I multiply, and I get. 2 times x is 2x, 6 times 3 is 18. The only way to get rid of this multiply by 2 is to divide by 2. So I'm going to divide both sides by 2, and I get x equals 9. That's your final answer. That's like a level 1 question for when you need to solve for x with these. Now, let's go on to question number 2. Ooh, this one looks difficult. I have an x in my numerator, an x in my denominator. And I got numbers all on one side. Here's what you got to do. Draw your band-aid. Draw your band-aid, both sides, and multiply. So I have 15 times x, which is just 15x. And that's equal to, here's where a lot of students are going to take a tumble. This is five times the expression of 10 plus x. So it's going to be five times 10 plus x. You need to put this expression right here in parentheses because you are distributing your five to both terms. So now that I distribute, I have five times 10 and five times x. So I have 15 x equals five times 10 is 50 plus 5x. We want all of our variables on the left-hand side of our equal. So to get rid of that positive 5x, I'm going to subtract 5x. Subtract 5x. My 5x is cancel. And I get, let's see, 15x minus 5x is 10x. And that's equal to 50. Now the only way to get rid of that 10 is to divide by a 10. So I divide by 10, divide by 10, and I get x equals 5. That's your final answer. Now our next example. I have 3 over 10 equals x plus 2 over 8. If you were able to do the last question, I believe you can do this question. Try to do it by yourself if you would like to. Zone me out. Put your headphones in. 
I simply draw my bandy or my butterfly like anyone should. I multiply. So I get 10 times x plus 2. Remember, we need to put that in parentheses. And that's equal to 3 times 8. 3 times 8 is 24. I now distribute my 10 to my x and my 10 to my 2 because it's got parentheses. So I get 10 times x, which is 10x. I get 10 times 2, which is 20. And then I get equals 24. My next step is I got to get rid of that positive 20. The only way to get rid of that positive 20 is to subtract 20. So I subtract 20, subtract 20, and I get 10x equals 4. How do I get rid of that? Multiply by 10, I divide by a 10. So I'm going to divide both sides of my equation by a 10. My 10s cancel, so I just get x equals 4 tenths. Or, if I type in my calculator, I get x equals 0.4. That's your final answer. So giving you the heads up, in algebra, we did not get decimals as our final answer often. In geometry, it's pretty common, so get used to it. And that's why we're going to get some decimals in our answers over the next few weeks. Now on to our final example. I would love, love for you to simply write in the open response box on Edpuzzle how you would approach this question. Now we're going to solve it. First step, draw your butterfly. So I do 3 times p plus 6. And that's equal to 4 times 8. What's 4 times 8? 32. Distribute your 3. Angry bird it, angry bird it. 3 times p is 3p. 3 times 6 is positive 18. And that's equal to 32. My next step, I got to get rid of that 18. This is just a two-step equation. I subtract 18 from both sides. Subtract 18 from both sides. 18's cancel. What's 32 minus 18? Sorry for the awkward silence. I wanted to see if anyone would shout the answer out, but since I'm recording this previously, I don't really know. 32 minus 18 is 14. So I get 3p equals 14. Now the only way to get rid of that multiplied by 3 is to divide by it. So I'm going to divide, divide, and I get p equals 14 over 3. That can be your final answer. <clears throat> or if you type it on Desmos, you will get p equals 4.666666 repeating. So I'm just going to write a few sixes and then draw my repeat line on it forever and ever and ever. So both of these are acceptable answers. Well, that's it for today. We went over how to solve equations using ratios and to solve for x by using cross multiplication. If you have any questions, please email myself or Miss Daniel. Today's classwork is going to be a handout. It's on iLearn. If you don't want to do it on the handout, that's completely fine. Just do it on a separate sheet of paper, take a picture, submit it to us. But we would really like you to do it with a stylus on your iPad. That way we can all have it in one little place. Again, if you have any questions, email myself or Miss Daniel. Have a great day, ladies.